The third Sunday of Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday because the entrance antiphon, which is often replaced by a hymn at the beginning of Mass, but if you have a missal, you might find it there, or Magnificat, you will see the entrance antiphon to rejoice in the Lord always, like we heard, um, well, actually, I don't think we heard it this year, but sometimes it's the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Or was it today? I can't even remember. Yes, it was. Okay, thanks be to God. Good. Um, I'm losing my mind. Um, St. Paul tells us, rejoice, and he says it twice. Rejoice in the Lord. And he calls us to have that joy because God is near, because God is close to us. And then he gives us some other advice that we heard today. And so we are invited to uh, enter into the joy that is coming to us because the Lord is coming to us. Even John the Baptist, as someone who is close to the Lord, is joyful. But we uh, may think he is way too intense to be joyful. But in fact, John the Baptist very much is a joyful person. But we, in our society, in our day and age, sometimes get joy confused. We kind of misunderstand what joy should look like or how it should be. But for Christians, joy is not about being all super bubbly or something else like that. Um, you know, there's lots of things that people in our society would think could bring them joy. But really, that just brings a short-term fleeting happiness, uh, kind of getting you all excited, like say, for example, um, standing in front of a huge crowd as a grown man dressed in pink. That's just a random example, not that that would ever happen. But that does not necessarily give this kind of real Christian joy, right? That real joy that we get as Christians comes from something very different, even in the midst of trials. So I looked up some words from Pope Francis um, in one of his earlier writings as Pope, Evangelii Gaudium, called The Joy of the Gospel. He says, We do well to keep in mind the early Christians and our many brothers and sisters throughout history who were filled with joy, unflagging courage and zeal in proclaiming the gospel. Some people nowadays console, the, nowadays console themselves by saying that things are not as easy as they used to be. Yet we know that the Roman Empire was not conducive to the gospel message, or the struggle for justice, or the defense of human dignity. Every period of history is marked by the presence of human weakness, self-absorption, complacency, and selfishness, to say nothing of the concupiscence which preys upon us all. These things are ever present under one guise or another. They are due to our human limits rather than to particular situations. And so let us not say, then, that things are harder today. They are simply different. But let us learn also from the saints who have gone before us, who confronted the difficulties of their own day. And so I propose that we pause to rediscover some of the reasons which can help us to imitate them today, to share the joy that they had in the midst of suffering, to have the same for ourselves. Ultimately, brothers and sisters, the source of the joy of the saints, the source of the joy for any Christian, comes from knowing, truly knowing in full confidence, the core of our gospel, that you are loved so much by God that he would die for you. If you can allow that to sink into your heart and really realize that that is for you and not just for humanity in general, but for me, Jesus loves me this much, that will be the source of your joy. St. Paul says this today. Rejoice always. Your kindness should be known to all because the Lord is near. Have no anxiety. Indeed, you will not have anxiety if you have this joy. But in everything, by prayer, petition, and with thanksgiving, 
Make your requests known to God. Share to God what is on your heart in prayer. And then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We can have a joy that is a good, uh, it's a peaceful, um, uh, well, peaceful joy. It comes from a type of peace, not from a bubbliness and excitedness that we, we kind of confuse joy with in our world today, but it comes from a deep inner peace. And that deep inner peace comes from knowing that we are loved. In order for us to get to that point, though, one step that is really helpful for us is to practice gratitude. Realizing uh, or having that posture, that habit of gratitude in our life will allow us to ultimately be attentive to how God is loving us because he is, but we need to see it and um, appreciate it. And I think that can come from developing the habit of prayerfully counting your blessings. Consider the joyful people that you know in your life. Not the bubbly ones, but the ones who have that deep and abiding peace um, and are able to, from that peace, truly give of themselves to others. I wager that many of those people have a very deep faith, a deep life of prayer. And all of them are people who consider life an overwhelming blessing, even in the midst of its trials. They have not taken the goods of this life for granted. They have discovered even the goods that can come from trials. They ultimately are living the words that St. Paul says to us today. They know that God is near to them, and they rejoice in him. They find their joy ultimately in him and in that nearness. Those who are far from God, those who think God does not even exist, cannot have joy. It's hard to say thank you to the universe as if it were a person. We know that it is not. So one simple challenge that I have for all of you is to uh, try to practice this gratitude in a very intense way once. Sit down with a sheet of paper and a pen and set aside at least 30 minutes, but maybe an hour and start writing down listing everything that you could ever think of that you are grateful to have in your life. All of the blessings that you have ever received. Write these down, one by one by one by one, as a way of realizing all the ways God is telling you, I love you. That is a, going to be a beautiful gift. Maybe a little bit of a challenge in the midst of this crazy time in this busy season, but worth it. In fact, I don't just encourage you to do this, but in the words of that pure Americana of Christmas films, I triple dog dare you to do this, okay? I triple dog dare you to spend 30 minutes at least thanking God again and again and again. That will bring you joy. And then you will be able to see your life slowly transformed from that joy, from knowing that you are loved. But mind you, I want you to do this prayerfully, not just, you know, kind of going back and cataloging, but to do it in a spirit of prayer, to do it with the Lord in his presence, knowing that the Lord is near. In a sense, looking at him, look at you. Watching him gaze upon you with those eyes of love. As you catalog, in a sense, his numerous messages of love to you. If you do this, and then you have that peace that the world cannot give and cannot take away, if you realize how near the Lord is in your life, then it is easy for you to be like those crowds that come to John the Baptist today saying, okay, what do I need to do to change? How do I respond to this love? And it will be easy for you to see progress in the Christian life, to see the Lord beginning to transform you. As I 
said, I myself, triple dog, dare you to do this, but I also want you to hear Pope Francis giving you the same encouragement as I finish my homily today. Pope Francis says, once again in Evangelii Gaudium, I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ, or at least an openness to letting him encounter them. I ask all of you to do this unfailingly each day. No one should think that this invitation is not meant for him or her, since no one is excluded from the joy brought by the Lord. The Lord does not disappoint those who take this risk. Whenever we take a step towards Jesus, we come to realize that he is already there, waiting for us with open arms. Now is the time to say to Jesus, Lord, I have let myself be deceived. In a thousand ways, I have shunned your love. Yet here I am once more to renew my covenant with you. I need you. Save me once again, Lord. Take me once more into your redeeming embrace. <laughs>